Hello everyone. What's up? Since I got my 3D printer I always had the idea to build a brushless motor and now finally came the time to build it and after a bit of research on internet because I was not exactly sure how they are built I start designing my own motor I chose to have a motor with 12 slot and 16 pole but there are a lot of design variants the most common being 4 pole and 3 slot 4 pole and 6 slot but I also saw motors with 12 pole and 9 slot but there are also motors with much more than that so here I am I start designing first the rotor because I needed to know right diameter of the rotor in order to fit 16 niademia magnets with a width of 5 millimeters. If the diameter of the rotor is too small, the magnets will not fit, and if it is too large, too the gap between the magnets will be too large, and this will affect the performance of the motor. And after that I designed the stator and so on of course that includes more than that. It includes a lot of measurements and calculations. Here I designed the stator with 12 slots. As I said, I had to do a lot of calculations and measurements. I suspect that many of you already know this. So it must be calculated carefully because the distance between the stator and the rotor must be as small as possible to increase the efficiency of the motor but not too small because we risk the rotor touching the stator. So after a couple hours of work in CAD program I finally got finished the model and I exported the STL files and was time to print my motor. While the motor is being printed I started making the shaft. For the shaft I chose to use a metal bar with a diameter of 5 mm. I cut it to a length of approximately 5 cm, and at one end of the bar I made a thread with a length of approximately 2 cm. For the thread I used an M5 die. And after that, at the other end I made a small cut for the safety washer. It should look something like this. The cut should not be too deep, about one millimeter is enough. And now I can insert the safety washer by pressing it in place with pliers. This is the full size of the shaft. And with the miracle of time, all the parts of this motor are printed, and now it's time to assemble the motor. But first I will start winding the stator. All coils must be wound in the same direction at every third slot. Of course, nothing goes according to plan, and after winding the first coils, I realized that I don't have enough copper wire. Luckily, I still had some 0.5 millimeter copper wire, and I started winding the stator again. After some time I finished winding, it should look something like this. This is a star or Y configuration, and each end of the coil must be connected together, as shown in the attached image, and the beginning of the coils will be connected to ESC. After I finished the stator, I started gluing the magnets. The dimensions of the magnets are 10 by 5 by 2 millimeters.
When you glue the magnets, make sure you position the magnets correctly. They must be arranged with the polarity north, south, north, south, and so on. Otherwise, the motor will not work. Finally, I finished with the rotor. The magnets are put in place. I have to let the glue dry a little. And now we can continue with the assembly of the motor. I will use four bearings MR95ZZ, but initially I wanted to use two 685ZZ, which are a little bigger, but because they make a lot of noise, I gave up the idea. Even though I bought them specifically for this project, now they are useless to me. I put a drop of fine mechanical oil in each bearing just to be sure that they will run smoothly. Inserting the bearings into the stator is very simple, pressing a little harder, and they should slide in without problems. And finally, I will attach the base to the stator. Note that I used M3 inserts for the four screws that hold the base in place with the stator. And in the end, I will press in the strain relief ring. But you have to pay attention to the cut in the ring, because it has to be aligned with the wires, otherwise the ring will not be able to be pressed completely inside. Now it's time to put the rotor, but before that it is necessary to put a small washer between the stator and the rotor that will act as a spacer. The rotor is a bit difficult to insert. Instead of pressing by hand, I will use the nut to tighten it, and in this way the nut will pull the shaft through the rotor without risking damaging the rotor or inserting it incorrectly, which will lead to vibrations when the motor will run. Now everything is assembled and it's time to test the motor, but unfortunately the motor doesn't start by itself, it needs a little help at first. And this happens because the stator is made of plastic and not of ferromagnetic material, but even so, when the motor starts it has some power in it.
and finally I test it with a 10 centimeter propeller that I made, and keep in mind that this is half the speed. Holding it in your hand is very dangerous, because the rotor can break at very high speeds. Okay, thank you for watching, and if you liked it, give it a like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.